Linda Bartsch from the Bruce Company is taking your calls at 270-9933. Let's think spring. 9933, I think is what I wanted to say. Daffodils. Yes, daffodils and tulips. tulips. And I just walked out and there was, everything was so pretty and springy. And little bluebells down here and a little maidenhair fern. So, and then we started off with the bromeliad, which is an easy, easy house plant. So all of these, of course, they're inside now because we finally have snow. And, and Pam was absolutely right. The snow is actually very, very good to help protect the plants that are outside. Because They're supposed to have snow. That's, that's how right. it works. <laughs> All right, let's get to the calls. We'll start with Jillian in Madison. Hi. Is it Jillian? Jillian. Jillian. Go ahead, Jillian. Yeah. yeah, I called a couple of weeks ago, but my phone dropped in. I didn't get the answer. I want to plant some asparagus um, on my back porch in two large flower pots. And I want to know, can I wrap them with pipe warmer in the wintertime? Okay. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Asparagus plants are heavy feeders, and I've never um, heard of them being grown. There are some crops that it will adapt to um, containers like that. But I think that you're better off if you have a, a little a plot of land. You could definitely plant asparagus there. You dig it down a, a little trench, and you use compost, and then you gradually after you put the roots in, you gradually fill. So in a pot, I think it might be problematic. I don't think that the root system is going to be extensive enough and the watering is going to be is issues. And so. Okay. It's not, a, it's not a pot plant. Potted it's plant. Not, a, not one for, uh, for your potted conditions. All right. Let's go to Linda in Janesville. Hi, Linda. Hi there. Hi. Which question? Yes, I brought in a, a hibiscus bush to winter. And um, how often do I have to water that? And now it appears like it's got cobwebs on all the new growth. Oh, okay. I'm concerned. Hibiscus are very prone to developing issues with with um, spider mites, and if you're if they're numerous enough that you are seeing that, you can test for it by taking the plant. And I've, I've described this before. You take a sheet of white paper, put it underneath the plant, and then vigorously tap it. And of little specks like pepper, the size of pepper, is on that sheet of paper. Then you have spider mites, and you would have to use uh, a specific type of pesticide that would control spider mites because those are not insects. So you have to make sure that you're using something like insecticidal soap or along those lines. Now, what might help is that you actually prune it back and treat it. Um, unless it's, and if it's not real valuable to you and you have a lot of other house plants, I would consider just discarding it and not going through all this. And those mice can jump to the other plants. It can move to other plants, yes, they can. But, but if there's webs, that's not good. Yes, and they're tiny little webs. It's not like a cobweb in the corner. All right, Mary in Baraboo. Hi, Mary. Hey, um, I have a question for Linda today. Uh, my question is, when you're given bulbs to force, such as paper whites, and they're done blossoming, what do you do with them? Okay, paper whites are a sort of a special um, bulb. You can't, there's no point in saving them. After they get done flowering, just take the root system and everything and just throw it away because they are not hardy enough to survive in Wisconsin. And that taps all of the energy. Okay, so it's just a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it and get rid of it. They smell well. They smell great. They don't. <laughs> Julie, we have this ongoing battle with that. <laughs> Julie in Baraboo. Hi, Julie. Hi, yes. I have a question about um, uh, maybe like a drusella point plant. Um, it looks like a tall cornflower plant. Okay. Maybe dracaena. I, I think it's probably Yes, dracaena. that sounds right. Okay. And, and um, I'm trying to figure out if I need to trim it. Okay, usually dracaenas, they just keep, they're indeterminate and they just keep growing taller and taller and the lower leaves start to look, decline and you pull those off. Right. Uh, so that's the kind of, yes, prune away anything that's brown or unattractive. Sometimes you can just pull them off the stem or just cutting them. Okay. Let's go to Al in Edgerton. Hi, Al. Oh. Al, you there? Yes, I am. What's your question? Yeah, hi. I have some, yes. I have some climbing rose bushes and some irises that I never cut back this year. Is that going to be a problem? Well, now that we have the snow, that's the best thing that could have happened to protect both the iris and those that rose. And since we haven't cut it back, just wait till spring and wait till you see new growth and then cut off any part of that rose that doesn't start to have little buds growing. And usually, sometimes that can mean like May, because last winter, that was a cold one. Right. That was a late start. So. Depends upon the weather. Sometimes it's April, you'll start to see new growth, and then you get all the dead por portion cut away. All right, we are out of time. If you're on the line, stay there, Linda. We'll talk to you off the air. See you next time, and we'll be right back with a final check your forecast.